All right, let's do some tuning exercises, examples about PID control. If you haven't watched, I am cover covering tuning guidelines and advantages, disadvantages, basically fundamentals about PID on this video. So it, it is just 12 minutes. Uh, I, I would strongly suggest first watch that video and then look at this one. All right. Assuming you watch, basically in PID control, there is a system and there is this PID controller. You have three gains to choose, KP, KI, KD, proportional gain, integral gain and derivative gain. And here is the error for this video. I would like to track for three different systems, this command C of T. And here is the output. I am taking the output, feeding back, comparing with the reference or the command, constructing this error signal. This error signal goes to PID control uh, parameters and then summing these control actions up. Here is the control signal sent to this plant. And in the first example, I am going to assume we have, have the second order um, open loop stable system. All right, so in all plots that I'm going to show you, this is the C of T that we would like to track, and this is the system's response output, Y of T. This video, uh, this, this plot is for KP is one. I just choose it one and other gains to be zero. As you see, um, we are so far away the command. And basically, I would like to increase KP further to achieve a nice reaction, nice rise time. I am increasing now KP to 10 while keeping other parameters zero. I achieve the much, much faster rise time as you compare it here. Rise time was around 2.5 seconds. Now, when I increased KP to 10, it is around one second. I would like to increase this rise time reaction a little bit more, now 20. Um, this is a nice reaction time or rise time. Now, once you achieve this, I'm going to start playing with other terms. The first term that I'm going to play is integral gain because I would like to track this comment. Here, I cannot track. If you run this simulation further than 15 seconds, you are going to see you cannot track. Now, while keeping KP20, I increased KI to 0 to 5. Now, you see, we are you know, oscillating around this command. Rise time is still good. So, um, we could be able to track this command by playing with KD. So, now let's put some KD, keeping them the same. KD is 5. We kill all these oscillations we have some overshoot, so th there is a room for improvement. Let's increase KD to 10. So we have a nice slope, and this is kind of an acceptable response. A little bit overshoot, but that's okay. So now once you obtain on a ballpark what you want to achieve, smooth transients, nice rise time, good reaction, no oscillations, you can fine tune these gains. And basically, by fine tuning, I just decreased Ki a little bit down, such that I obtained this much nicer and smooth um, closed loop system performance. And this was for this system, which I followed the guidelines I um, mentioned in the first slide that I was referring to the video, PID control fundamentals on, on the YouTube channel. The second system now, or the second example, I am looking at this system. We have 0.5s plus 0.75 on the numerator, one zero. And we have s to the power of three, s to the power of two and one. S is missing, so this system cannot be open loop stable. Now, one, once you start with KP100, you are going to see that you have an unstable system performance. 
it diverges. Now, in this case, before playing with, you know, KP, increasing KP will not help. I first would like to stabilize this system and then follow my original um, uh, tuning guidelines, similar to what I did in the previous example. So I am going to try to stabilize this by applying both K in addition to KP, KD, because KD will have a stabilizing effect. So if you want, um, analytically, you can check by using root Hurwitz criterion or root locus if it is possible to stabilize this system by using KP and KD together. This will be a theoretical exercise. For example, um, to check this with root locus, you can watch this video about sketching root locus. I haven't yet covered in this uh, in my channel root Hurwitz criterion. If you want me to cover it, let me know. Root Hurwitz criteria can be used for checking stability, root locus, both stability and transient performance. Anyway, so I will, before doing it analytically, instead of doing analytically, I can increase KD a little bit. When I increased KD, I no longer have a unstable system response. This is kind of looking stable as these oscillations get think narrower. Now, I would like to stabilize it a little bit more. So let me increase KD a little bit further. Okay, nice stable response. Now, at this point, I am going to turn my attention back to KP, then in basically improve a nice reaction, rise time, then kill the error, and then play with KD as necessary to kill the oscillations. So my point is the following. If, like this example, you cannot have a stable response, first stabilize it by playing with KD, and then follow the original tuning guidelines. From this point, I am now going to follow the original tuning guidelines. All right. Let's increase KP. When you make it 20, you have a nice rise time and reaction is your system response nice. You have a steady state error, so we need to put some integral gain. I choose five. When it is five, it is basically oscillating around the reference or comment that we would like to track. Still, we have nice um, rise time. So now at this point, I would like to increase KD further. When you increase KD, you have an, a little bit overshoot, but you pretty much killed all the oscillations. Let's now fine tune. So if I reduced KI a little bit to, because to get rid of this a little bit overshoot, and increased KD a little bit more to have this nice smooth response that perfect attracts the command. And this is a very nice, acceptable system performance. But like, you know, in the first example and the second example, I am trying to follow the same um, rise time on a ballpark, um, minimal uh, overshoot, no oscillations. These are the generic um, uh, design guidelines. Of course, if you have a much faster system, you may want to make your rise time much uh, smaller. Or if you have a very slow system, you can take it minutes or even days in some real long examples, like some uh, ap control applications for chemistry. In the third example, I would like to illustrate something different. Now, in this example, first of all, I will start with one and two, because when I only applied one, zero and zero, we again have an um, unstable closed loop system. So I added a little bit KD to obtain nice, uh, you know, at least stable, system performance. As you will see, we track this comment even without KI, which is the main purpose of this example. This is because you already have kind of one over S term on your 
plant on your system. So you don't, if you already tracking to command without apply, without selecting Ki, then don't select, just use PD controller. So I just wanted to highlight this. So now, since by applying KD, we obtain a stable system, let's increase it further. I made KP 10. You kind of have a nice closed up system performance, nice basically rise time, a little bit oscillation, but as I did in the previous examples, you can now fine tune these to obtain a nicer closed up system performance. All right, so I hope you will find this video uh, helpful. If you want me to um, illustrate uh, or make more examples of PID or want me to talk about other topics, let me know. I just wanted to uh, post this video, which is complementary to the first video on PID control fundamentals. And this screenshot is from that video. On that video, I explained in detail how you should choose you know, design guidelines for KP, KI, and KD, advantages and disadvantages of the PID. And I hope this new video complements the previous video. All right, take care.